This is Have You Met. My guests today are a couple of YouTubers and travel vloggers, currently living the dream and making videos from their base in Bangkok, Thailand. About a year ago, they decided to stop what they were doing and leave the 9 to 5 grind for a more fulfilling and adventurous lifestyle. It was undoubtedly a decision that was not without risk, but it paid off and they now have over 37,000 YouTube subscribers and counting. In this episode, we talk tips and tricks for traveling on a budget, along with advice for YouTube success, and they tell me about all the fun they've had and tasty food they've tried since beginning their journey. Have you met Adriana and Dylan, aka Two Passports, One Dream? So give me a little bit of background, you guys, and tell me how you decided to travel to Thailand and to give YouTube a shot. And how did you make that reality? How did you make that dream a reality? The whole thing, wherever you want to go with it. We originally wanted to travel like Southeast Asia, yeah. East Asia, like without any sort of uh, YouTube. But mm -hmm. we also thought, would we do an Instagram? And then... We kind of got into thinking that we would randomly be just doing Instagram photos and we were kind of like planning it out and we're like that'd be really nice we planned this whole journey like we were saving up super 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 hard for a full year um and then the big dreaded thing that's made the whole world stop mm -hmm. uh stopped ours Cancel too yeah everything was cancelled because we thought it'll be fine it'll be fine we're going in October and it wasn't fine um but eventually Thailand opened back up and that was supposed to be our first country that we were going to go to anyway yeah. so basically Thailand opened and we thought oh this is our time we literally were right on it every day we were checking the news and as soon as we could apply for a visa to actually enter the country we did it we had to quarantine for two weeks separately when yeah. we first got to Thailand Separate which was well. yeah, yeah which was pretty intense because we were some of the first people that actually came in so you weren't allowed to quarantine together if you weren't married um but we could see each other through the window. So yeah, across the pool, other. we could wave. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't so too bad. That was nice. Kind of relaxing. It know, was very relaxing. Two to be weeks fair. of not leaving the room, someone bringing food to you, watching yeah. films. Yeah. yeah it's nice. Like being was, in prison, was, really. Yeah, but like in a really hot, beautiful place. You could hear the birds, you just couldn't see them. <laughs> yeah. We could go out yeah. once a day for an hour after one week and we could see each other, but we weren't allowed to touch. Two meters apart, we could see each other, so he would throw me sweets. It was Don't actually really that. romantic. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it was, that's intense. Yeah. And now here we are one year later now. But I think um, the whole YouTube thing, I'm not... We can't really... Like, when we trace it back to how we started, I can't really remember. It's like it just happened. We were like, yeah. no, we're not going to do Instagram. Nobody I think it's because we had, like, a semi-good camera. So we were like, why don't we use this to its potential? Yeah. But then after that, we decided to buy a GoPro anyway. Because that yeah. was a bit more nimble and had the stabilization and stuff. So that was so much easier. Yeah, I think it was something we, we always wanted like a project to have whilst we were traveling. So when the Instagram, we were kind of like, mm, that's not going to be exciting or interesting. We're not great at like posy, posy photos. You know? <sighs> no, it turns out that Instagram is a lot of it is not actually real life. Like a lot of it is not actually happening. It's just for Instagram. And I think that kind of didn't sit that well with us. No. And I, I think in the past, it's easy to kind of just be like, oh, this is great, this is great. But like, we wanted something that was a bit more real. So that's why we kind of ventured into YouTube, because it was like, you can actually give people entertainment and not just 20 seconds swipe, you know, on a screen. Yeah. And I feel like I'm I'm from a, like a tech background. So I did information systems in Cardiff University. I pick up, you know, uh, uh, softwares like pretty fast. So I thought, yeah. let's, let's do this video editing thing. And the first time I looked at it, I was like, whoa, what is this software? Where are the buttons? You know, this is going to be impossible. I think the first video took maybe like five days for me yeah. to edit. Now, but we were in quarantine at the time, so it was okay. You know, that, yeah, that's even worse. Five days of full <laughs> editing. Yeah. Now I only take, you know, maybe less than less than a day sometimes. Yeah. Wow. Like a nine-hour shift. He's come a long way, that's for sure. Yeah. That's all self-taught so, then? You didn't, like, learn any of the software before? No, just um, YouTube and just doing it yeah learning nice. about youtube on youtube <laughs> yeah because yeah. you you guys do edit your videos really well is it all you dylan or do you kind of share that load it i is do just dylan. everything to begin with and then adriana comes in and says you know this is too slow here Get rid of this. <laughs> <laughs> manually not so much Get rid like of my scene. Role. i look stupid yeah <laughs> yeah i think because we plan the videos now we plan the videos so well before we start shooting 
we know exactly what shots we want before we get them. Um, so it makes the editing a lot easier for Dylan because before we would just kind of shoot everything and then he just had to make the storyline happen somehow yeah. in the program afterwards. That's helped a lot. So that's helped. So I help in that sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so go yeah, back to before. You dev- yeah, well, yeah, I can see that. If anybody watches through your channel, even if they just jump in a video here and a video there, you know, one every 10, you're going to see the progression. It's, yeah, it's, it's really good stuff. It's really impressive. Yeah. Um, so go back to before again a little bit. And, and when you so when you had the actual decision, when you came to the decision, right, we want to go and do a year out there. We might do Instagram. Mm-hmm. We might not. That was kind of like a side thing, any Instagram, social media yeah. stuff. But how did you decide we want to go and travel out there for a year? You know, what was going on with you? So you were, I'm guessing, were finishing your studying, right, Adri- Adriana? And Dylan, yeah. I don't know exactly what you were doing. But yeah, how um, did you come so- to the decision to go? I've been to Southeast Asia and traveled before, and I always wanted to go back. Um, so previously to the YouTube channel, I started my own marketing business with my uh, best friend from home. Uh, it's called Copper Marketing, and we do like social media, marketing, mm. Facebook advertising, that sort of stuff. So I wanted to get out of the nine to five because I was working for Admiral, um, doing data warehousing. Mm. And then after maybe six months of starting the business, I quit my nine to five Mm -hmm. and then you know we just wanted to yeah I mean this 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 happened simultaneously as us saving up for this trip already so like the decision was almost already made before we even got really serious because as we met I said to Dylan I was like I don't want to stay in the UK not because I don't like the UK (laughs) just because I, I I didn't see myself continuing to live there um, and straight away, he was like, yeah, I completely agree. I want to travel. I want to explore more. And you can't figure out where you want to live if you haven't mm. tried some places out. Yeah. And Southeast Asia was always one of those like dream destinations that you really can do some like raw backpacking, uh, but also l- live really well on a lower budget. So it's a mm. great place to start. And I think when he then became self-employed, in a sense, with his friend it made it even more difficult to go to a nine to five and like wake Mm. up early in the morning and go to work. And I thought, okay, like I'm just saving this money, like work hard now and then we can Mm. finally enjoy it. And since coming out here and starting this YouTube, it's always been that push to stay out of the nine to five. Cause like, we never want to think, oh, now eventually we'll have to go back to the UK and go back to our old jobs. Mm. That's like, that's not an option. And we always knew that, you know, my business was paying um, for the first few months of Thailand yeah. and then we would keep doing the YouTube enjoying it doing a few videos a week yeah and then hopefully that would pick up and now it started to pick up now which is which is yeah. nice yeah, yeah. Did, did you ever really expect that did you ever actually think the YouTube is gonna work out we and did make us... we expected it to happen at some point but yeah all of a sudden like last month we... it was it was like a stark turn it was like from the growth was very, <laughs> I'm trying to show you with my hands because it was such a, like a shocking graph. Yeah. Like it was like, whoop. Yeah. So it was like kind of gradual for the first year or like 11 yeah. months. And then it just went, boop. Yeah. Wow. It's like YouTube finally found us. But it's, I think a lot of people when they are, when they talk about how they started YouTube, they're like, oh, I just wanted to show our friends and family, like some fun clips. And it's like, that was never our mindset. Like, of course we want to show our friends and family what we're up to. But the mindset was always like, this is a business idea. This is a business plan. Like, treat this as our business. Like, two passwords to a dream is a very enjoyable, but like mm. a business that you have to work hard at. You have to do research. You have to plan things. You have to organize yourself. You have to act as if it's an actual setup, you job. know, business, a yeah. job. And then if you do that, then eventually you will get the payout for your hard work that you've put in. And I think that ended up. It's starting now. Becoming more of a reality, yeah. Really. Yeah, for sure. To go back to the start of your YouTube journey then. So when you so you were planning the journey of the travelling already mm-hmm. and that, that was that was the primary goal. And then at some point YouTube creeps in, you're like, forget Instagram, let's let's focus on YouTube. What yeah. was the initial plan with YouTube? What did you want to do with it? What did did you, are you has it become exactly what you intended or did you have a kind of different idea of where you wanted to go with it initially? Initially I think we were doing a bit of everything we didn't really topics. know yeah and then we kind of was like we need to niche down on something mm-hmm. and we love going to hotels and we love food 
Yeah. So we decided to go down those routes. Yeah, and then I think also like we like thing we like watching videos of things that are a little bit like fun or quirky or a bit different. So that's how we went into the route of all, like the series of weird and wonderful hotels and like weird and wonderful cafes and food places because it was just like. That's super random. It's super fun. It's something that you don't see that often that we like to experience. But then also as like a secondhand effect, we get to show other people. Yeah, and I think we want to make videos that people want to watch. <laughs> yeah, I think we want to make videos that we would want to watch. And we're very critical with what we watch a lot of the time and what we actually end up enjoying. And I think if we make something that we want to watch, then it's perfect for our channel. But what we first started with, it, it's like when you start anything, you don't know what you're doing and you have to learn on the job and it's like mm. looking back we're like okay let's not do that again let's not do that again what let's definitely thinking? not do that again yeah what were we thinking there this is embarrassing and then you know learn from that and move onwards <laughs> yeah yeah so it's changed but not like kind of drastically it's evolved it's become more refined more focused yeah. And is it going to continue like that? a great place to do that because the, the community of, on YouTube is yeah. massive. Yeah, mm. there's some some countries have a greater community than others. And Thailand is definitely one of the ones that has a lot of support. And it allows us to do a lot more exploring of this country specifically without kind of having the backlash of like, oh, didn't you know that? Or you should research this beforehand. Because the point of our videos isn't to educate. It's to entertain and mm. we entertain, I essentially, I people guess. People educate us. But yeah, people educate us and we entertain by sort of showing just our experience of something as opposed to like, this is the blah, 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 you know? Yeah. 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 You're not making documentaries. But no. I do. You do learn some things in there. They, they are cool. Like you said, you get educated, I guess, on different foods and things like that. And mm -hmm. then people learn that that vicariously. Um, mm. I guess this is a good time for you, whichever one of you wants to go with this, but or, or both as a dual effort. But to kind of summarize your channel, like in a, in a kind of fairly brief way, just for anybody listening that ne has never seen it, is not familiar with it. Um, yeah. How would you kind of sum it up in a nutshell? Adriana, oh, Adriana. This, this is, yeah, this is a lot of pressure. Um, <laughs> Spotlight. Oh. Fun, highly edited <laughs> videos mm -hmm. of things that you may not have seen before in Thailand. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Involving accommodations and food. And challenges. And challenges. And sometimes all mished into one. And it's all on the streets, potentially with local guides and things like that, right? Um, it's... Yeah. We haven't used any local guides. We haven't used any... Well, we've... No, not really. Well, I maybe think not guides, the... but people, Essentially, local people. like, the people are there but we don't really do videos with other people it just kind of is just us figuring things out and then as we go we learn from the comments on our videos and for the next ones we then know more the thai people comment so much to them yeah like they help us so much yeah we have to translate but they basically tell us we have to google translate all of them that. that's called that you should eat this with this <laughs> yeah exactly so we learn a lot of things that you wouldn't necessarily learn from the internet basically that's yeah what it is because most of the thai internet obviously is in thai yeah and a lot of things you can't really google and a lot of the things that you wouldn't necessarily write down like it's not a known fact that this is eaten with that or that is eaten at that specific time but it's like something that you learn on the streets mm. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That, that was, was not very succinct yeah sorry that was very long-winded <laughs> It's fine. My apologies. <laughs> I saw at least one of your videos that you do some with like some local people that go and pick out some food for you on a certain budget. Oh, yes. And, uh, and oh, yeah. like the street food challenges, yes. I think you call them, yeah? They So the first street food challenge we did with the local people that you mentioned, actually, um, only one of them is a local. He's from Thailand, but they are another yeah. YouTube channel as well. So they are friends, um, which was kind of a fun one. Since then, we've only really done the challenges sort of on our own so we decide exactly what we're gonna have normally what we try to do is just find the things that look not the most i don't want to say random but look look like something we haven't seen before so of course we love a good pad thai and like spring rolls and things like that like anyone else would but just picking out the most quirky looking foods which end up being kind mm. of the classics that we've just never heard of in sort of the western world yeah and hopefully when people especially Westerners watch our videos, they'd be like, oh, I've always wanted to know what that was. But I've never tried it. And no, it kind no. of opens your eyes to new things. 
There's loads of things I've seen you guys eat that I want to try now, by the way. Um, yeah. <laughs> what, what are some of the foods that you have like since come to love since being out there and that you, you really like that you didn't really know what they were or didn't know what they tasted like before you moved out there? Um, because we've been to Thailand before, I think mm-hmm. we knew a lot of dishes yeah. already. But I think a lot of desserts we've tried this time around mm-hmm. more than anything. Like um, this... The- Kanom Krok. Kanom Krok, which is um, basically like this. It looks like a little mini pancake. It's one of our favorites. And it's made with like, a lot of their desserts is made with coconut. But it's like made with kind of like a coconut, almost doughy pancakey base. And it's got different things in there. Sweet corn is actually one of the delicious ones, yeah. which sounds very strange, but it's actually delicious and it's sweet and it's delicious. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. That's definitely and there's loads favorites. of <laughs> loads of loads of sticky rice stuff as well, yeah, and like yeah, what is it? No, I don't know if I pronounce rice. this right, but like taro or something like that. Is it taro, like a... okay, so taro is a root vegetable which looks similar to sort of a deep purple sweet potato, yeah. but if not cooked appropriately, can be poisonous. Yes. Mm. So that's kind of wow. fun, and it has to be cooked for a really long period of uh, of time. But it's basically like uh, it's similar. It, it tastes very similar to like a sweet potato, but yeah. it's often mixed into things or used like within sticky rice or something yeah. like that. Which is yeah, I saw that one yesterday. It, it looks yeah. like some kind delicious. of like ber- berry substance in the middle of this rice. It yeah, it's super delicious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you tried these like other like squishy like I don't even know what to call yeah. them. You thought they were going to be crunchy, and they ended up being squishy. They were random. They uh, turns out as well because we were at a breakfast market. We thought there was going to be a breakfast food, but it turns out that on one hand, a lot of people buy them to give as offerings to the monks. So there were a lot of monks going up and down that market and taking on offerings and blessing people um yeah yeah probably because they weren't that nice the... yeah no because they're just like nice simple not too sweet just like a very simple food but it turns out that they're not a breakfast food they're just kind of like a a, a dessert or something sweet that you can buy so oh. they're very f- fragrant tasting yeah 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 floral floral mm. yeah I, not not my not our favorite no what flavor are the bad. blue ones? Are they like you always say something about butterfly or something? Butterfly They're not pea. actually butterfly so, favorite. Are they? Or is it, is it... No, so butterfly <laughs> pea is a um, is a flower, uh, and right. it's a deep purple kind of bluish flower that they use wow. very widely, often for like welcome drinks and things like that in hotels. They often use butterfly pea, and it's like kind of floral, quite sweet. Yeah, and it makes this beautiful color, which is nice. Nice, yeah. It yeah. sounds sounds and looks tasty. <laughs> yeah, <Cool>. it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you come up with new ideas for your videos as well? Like, do you come up with? Are you thinking about new ones all the time, or is it kind of you going with the ideas that you've got for now, and then you're like, oh, we'll, we'll look at more in six months? How do how do you work like that? We usually go to a coffee shop first, and then yeah. take the iPad with us. Yeah, and then we sit down and brainstorm we do a lot of things we look on youtube for inspiration we talk to each other we think what videos have we done well in the past yeah what can we change but also what videos might we have seen that we liked an aspect of that we could then broaden to make another video on its own but then also if we have something that's quite successful like the street food challenge that had such a good feedback that we thought oh we can actually do the same thing but like make a spin of it so it's not just the same video again it's like oh we've got a morning market we've got a night market make into a series yeah make into a series that that you know if they like the first one they'll like the second one and yeah because so so with forth. youtube what what youtube wants is that people watch a video after the other yeah so that's when you start seeing your vi- uh, your channel pick up you get those uh, they, because years, obviously youtube yeah. make more money and then having three or four street food videos people yeah. were sessioning through them yeah <laughs> and... so it's nice you could see that they were kind of like grouping them together but I think planning or like thinking of a title or thinking of the video concept is probably the most time consuming part of the whole process. Yeah. Obviously, the editing takes a while, but the editing is simpler if you've filmed well. Yeah. And filming well is only really possible when you've got a good concept. Mm-hmm. And um, we're very critical with, we're with, extremely with critical. our video um, titles and what we even shoot in the first yeah. place. Like we've had people say, 
Or you could just record your daily life. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. Why don't you just do this? And all everything. we do is sit in the bedroom, yeah. watch TV, <laughs> and no plan videos. <laughs> no one wants to see that. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> How many hours of content do you normally film um, and and cut away to make, like, say, a 10, 15 minute video? So the latest one that I was just working on today, um, it was a full day of recording. Like we got up at yeah. seven. Yeah. And we, you know, it was like a, basically nights. a 24 hour. We didn't film for 24 hours, no. but we did film for a full sort of 12 hour day. Yes. So, so it's a lot total, more content than normal. I had one hour and 20 minutes mm-hmm. to cut down. Um, and I've got it down to 13 minutes. Yeah. But I think on normally, for example, with a street food video, um, we only film, we're there for maybe like two hours. Max. Yeah. Maximum. And we don't film the full two hours. We film maybe for, you know. Yeah, we, we take a look around hour. first, yeah. see what's available, see if yeah. we can even record. So again, it's like all in the planning because each clip, you know what you're going to use. Whereas the video we filmed yesterday day before david phil we filmed it the day before yesterday and because it's kind of like a new concept that we're kind of trying out it did take a lot of a lot more filming yeah than normally but we also do a lot of time lapses so we'll set the camera behind yes so it looks like we have a lot of content but it's just like squished into a little (laughs) yeah speed that up yeah it'll be tiny (laughs) and you use a drone as well right Mm-hmm. Depends where we are. Yeah, in Bangkok, I don't know if 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 you know this, but there's a a lot of power lines and a ridiculous mm. amount of power lines and a lot of concrete buildings. Interference, and yeah. Wi-Fi interference. A lot of interference. So often the drone will go up, and then it'll just sit there, and you think, oh, I lost signal. connection straight away. Um, so we don't want to risk that. So basically, in the in this very built up area here in Bangkok, we don't tend to use it, but. When we go down to the southern part of Thailand, we're more than happy to use our drones there. Yeah, yeah. And that looks and beautiful. And it looks awesome. Yeah. From above. Ah, oh, so nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there were a couple of little shots of like drone shots in, in some of your videos that I see. And I'm like, oh yeah, I bet that that must have taken like half an hour to do that whole thing. And it's just like two seconds of, of shot. Yeah. Like it's really but nice. It's always worth but it. It's, yeah, exactly. It was like one yeah. where you're going around a corner on your moped. And oh, you must have. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you remember like the one? One of the... Um, and when we went in Chiang Mai, hairpin one bend. Of the, um, oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Might be in the tree house. Or something yeah, like yeah, and it's funny because those shots, like obviously they look really like scenic, but it's like I'm sat there holding the remote control, <laughs> and it's like drive, drive. <laughs> He's waiting. He's like, can I go? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's a yeah. great little go, shot. Go, go. It's a great little shot. They they add a lot. Because our our drone doesn't um track. Yeah. Moving. Like some of the newer drones or the most expensive ones, you can actually tell it to track you for forever. Yeah, so basically. you could just drive and it would follow you, but we're like wow. manually like. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. I didn't realize they can track you now, like just a commercial yeah. drone for mm-hmm. filming. That's that's wild. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of scary, in fact. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so your next video, you said you like did some different stuff. When's that coming out? Yeah, we're going to, because re- it's New Year's Eve tomorrow, we're going to release it a little bit earlier. We usually do about... Between six and eight, we usually post. At Thai time, Depends. which is GMT plus seven. Yeah, so. so we might do it at four, just in case everyone's out, you know, yeah. partying with their family and stuff. So we might do it at mm. like three, yeah. four o'clock. But it's, mm. um, I've just watched, just before we started chatting to you, actually, Dylan's done the, like, the first main draft, and it looks, it looks really, I think, yeah. I think it's going to be really enjoyable. It's, it's basically a challenge mm-hmm. where we see if we can spend less than 10 US dollars each for 24, 24 hours, hours to actually in Bangkok live like accommodation food a- an activity transport 10 oh. US dollars I mean that's like <laughs> a sandwich in the UK <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but we, we like, we're really honest in our videos and um because we can see right through when people are lying on YouTube yeah so we didn't want to like lie about it. but don't anything. give away what happens in the video it's gonna be off. No, you can. This yeah. is. Uh... Yeah, yeah, but like they have to watch it. To find oh, yeah, not happens. the end. Did not we do it? it? Who knows? <laughs> I, I can't say it now. Then. <laughs> anyway, we were super honest. Yeah. With our spending, and you'll yeah. see if you can uh, spend less than ten dollars. Yeah, because you're right. I think quite often you'll you'll see people do budget videos, and you think they're very clickable titles. But when you actually watch them, you think that I, something doesn't quite add up. I feel like that's something that we kind of get frustrated with watching so we yeah. try to make a really conscious effort to never have that be the case in one of ours and it's like this is reality of what we actually spent and what we actually did and this is what it costs yeah 
Cool. And yeah, I've, well. I've edited edited it down. Um, we used to do quite long videos. Yeah. Um, and they would used to drag, but we used to think that longer videos did better. But yeah. then we realized shorter videos with a higher view percentage are better. For so, our channel, anyway. For, <laughs> yeah, for our channel. It, it depends, <laughs> oh, no! It depends on the, on the audience itself. Um, and I've shortened this down, really quick scenes, mm-hmm. you know, things on the screen, sound effects, this kind of stuff. So yeah. it's a very engaging video. There's a new, you know, we do a lot of things throughout the day. So it's mm-hmm. not like three minutes of us eating one meal. It's like 30 seconds of us eating a meal, going on a train. Yeah. You know, it's enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm looking forward to watching it. Yeah. And yeah, I'll put yeah. the link in this along with a bunch of other links to a bunch of other videos that you've made and all that kind of thing. But this one will be pointed out somewhere. Um, Perfect. So let's talk a little bit about your book that you've written and, and see if we can extract some advice from, from both of you. And then maybe we'll jump onto YouTube before we dive into this like AMA kind of mm-hmm. thing. Um, so yeah, how did you decide to write a book, uh, an ebook, but but a book nonetheless? Um, it, a th- sorry, we have, we have a lot of information in our mind. Yeah, because... there's a lot of there's a lot of information in there, and I think quite often we do things and say things as if they're just kind of common knowledge, but quickly realize that it's just something that we kind of just discuss within our small couple. Yeah. Um, so I think it was something that we thought we want to make. We always want to make a product of some sort, and obviously an ebook is kind of an easy one to start with in the Mm. sense that it's like you can create it and you don't have to physically make anything you can just Mm -hmm. put it all together and then you know if people enjoy it they enjoy it um and we always wanted to make it something that would be helpful for people and i think having the uh, topic which is obviously like saving kind of saving money when you're booking hotels figuring out which hotel is a good one and just kind of making traveling and like the accommodation aspect of traveling a lot lot smoother yeah um we, it was something that made sense we take uh if we're going to book a hotel we wouldn't like this is one of the things that's in it we wouldn't just look at one website we'd look at three four five yeah. we'd look at the hotel's website we'd like, look for offers yeah um we've got loads of reviews of the various websites that we prefer to use which ones we like and why we like them as well as which ones we tend to stay away from and why we tend to stay away from them yeah. just to kind of simplify the process because you get quite often you think oh this is a good website and then you find out actually this one had all of these extra fees or this one had all of these things that i didn't mm. expect to happen um and we've had many people comment saying yeah. that they instantly say you know like 200 pounds yeah on there. so i think just a few things awesome. that you need to apply from the book is is you can save i mean you'll save the cost of the book within an instant yeah, and so we wanted to do something to um ha- help a charity in thailand mm-hmm. so 20 percent of the profit in 2021 in year, yeah is going to a charity yeah here in thailand mm-hmm. so do you know which charity mm-hmm. we've no, looked at a few different ones um but we haven't really like nailed down one that we're super comfortable with yet not that we're uncomfortable with any It'll be but something to do with helping people <laughs> no. yeah helping yeah. the thai people so it's uh, yeah okay. yeah Really it's cool. been a hard time for a lot of people. Mm. Yeah, for sure. So the book is called, what, Passports and Penny Pinching? Am I right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, of course I'm right. And it's uh, it's like <laughs> under £10, isn't it? Something like eight, seven, eight pounds, it something is... like that. Am it I... was eight, ten dollars so, $10, yeah. dollars yeah. So it's se- I think it's se- seven it... ninety nine. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not, I can't, you know, but, it, okay. it's all the different... Um, but if you're traveling to Thailand, yeah. you just need to save a tenner and then you've, you've yeah. got your money's worth, right? So but even anything, like... Uh, it, it's not just. It's for applicable Thailand. to every country. It's Great. websites that are like widely used and hotel chains that are widely used throughout Europe and the Americas, etc. So anybody that wants to travel on any kind of relatively anyone relative budget anywhere, yeah. yeah. Well, Except not even just a budget. Just people. Well, also applicable <laughs> for billionaires. I would say <laughs> if they like to save money. <laughs> yeah, because I think <laughs> it's probably I not necessarily it. marketed, but. <laughs> I think anyone that likes to have a, like anyone likes a good deal. And I think even if you're buying the most expensive hotels, especially they're billionaires for a reason, right? How do they save all that money? (laughs) So, you know. (laughs) Yeah, cool. Okay, great. So when did you, when did you put it out there? When did you publish it? The book? Maybe like August. We were in Samui. Yeah, we were in Samui. I remember where we were. I can see us doing it, but... uh, 
time just kind of morphs into one long day here. Yeah, I yeah. bet with the year you've be... had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> busy. <laughs> mm-hmm. A bit of a whirlwind. Um, mm-hmm. Any other tips you can offer? Like any any one or two little kind of specific tips you can you can offer up that you can give away as spoilers to from try and encourage book. people. Yeah, from the book. Yeah, yeah. Um, just use a coda. Yeah, a coda. <laughs> we do like a coda. That's that's our go-to website. Ninety-five we'll percent of the time, they are the cheapest. Um, apart from sometimes hotels own websites yeah that aren't on agoda so like with the marriott's and things like that they won't be on agoda they'll have their own deals on their own websites but that's a pretty good one that's that's one that we kind of hardly hardly we stick to it hard mm. not hardly <laughs> we stick to yeah. it we... the opposite of hardly <laughs> the opposite of hardly yeah <laughs> yeah what else have we got um there's so many Use vpns yeah yeah you know using, using VPNs. incognito mm-hmm now you're just naming loads of things, but there's <laughs> there's a lot of things that you can do. But I think there's if you just there's a lot more in there, don't worry. Yeah, there's a lot. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've exhausted the book now. There's no point. Yeah. <laughs> Only one it. page. <laughs> VPNs, incognito, pages. thirty-three Agoda. pages. Thirty-three pages. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool, awesome. Well, again, link, link that link in the description. So <laughs> scroll away. Um, and now let's see if we can get some free advice on somebody wanting to start a YouTube channel or grow a YouTube channel or anything like that. Again, I know we're not going to go in detail and, and I know you guys are new to this and you're still learning yourselves, but just any mm-hmm. little kind of any little tidbits or bits of advice that, that you could pass to somebody you six months ago, you know, uh, find the topic a topic yeah. and kind of stick to it um, in the sense that like find something that you. Yeah, well, it's different for you. Yours is obviously a podcast, so that's like kind of the topic at hand. But, you know, it's find something that you enjoy, something that you're quite good at, that you're able to replicate numerous times without getting bored, having people get bored, mm. um, and still still enjoying it at the end of the day. Because, yeah. you know, you see people being like, oh, you can do stuff about financial advice. And three videos in, they're like, oh, mm. I don't like this. But there's... Um, there's- you know, billions of people on YouTube. There's a target audience for everything. You make enough videos, YouTube will find that audience for yeah. you. Um, yeah. So it's more about just carry on, carry on, carry on, yeah. carry on. Persistence is key. Yeah, definitely. When yeah. you you said you had that moment where everything like skyrocketed, um, did you notice anything different in those few weeks? Was there something that you started to do differently? Like, oh, we just started to do this or, or oh, we didn't do that anymore and then it took off? Or was it just kind um, of... Well, we, was... that was the period where we shortened yeah. our videos. But, yeah. but mm. also, I think what helped us in getting us a little bit of that boost was um, we had Mark Queens in our title of one of yeah. our videos. And because he is so big on YouTube and the mm-hmm. SEO for Mark Queens, you know, it's so big, mm-hmm. the audience was there. Yeah. And I think not a lot of people knew that he had a Bangkok restaurant. Yeah, so they were quite interested in watching that video. But I think... That video, before, because each time we create a video, we have a discussion, like, what do we want to bring in from the last one? What do we want to improve on? And we had had an extensive um, number of discussions prior to that video talking about how we should shorten it down, how it should be snappier, how we should add this in and try that. And they're all small tweaks here and there mm. um, that we'd learned from our previous videos, but it's it was all kind of... Put together but in if now. I did if we did the same video again I would change so many things yeah. again now yeah. so True. things just develop yeah. and maybe the changes I make now wouldn't have been so good and you know timings as yeah well. but I think a, a good a good advice to take from that is just after each video try to improve on it like how can you make something better were you a bit awkward did you not make enough eye contact with the camera was yeah. it too long was it too short and we check the um uh, the audience retention. Yeah. So, why, why, why were people dropping off? Oh, because there's a long cutscene here. Yeah, you have to study your stats. You have to that. really, really study your stats like your life depends on it. Actually, I just remember something else that we really um, worked hard on during that time was our hook. Yeah. Like right at the beginning of the video, you only got, you know, 30 seconds really to impress someone to watch the rest of it. Yeah. yeah. So we really sat down and said, this is the only thing yeah. we're going to plan from this video. How do we make this engaging? Yeah, because when when we first started, I'm I'm sure a lot of people do this. They overplan 
but not in the way that you should. They overplan in terms of exactly what they're going to say because they're nervous before they speak on camera. Yeah. And what then happens is that you kind of sound a bit robotic and you're like repeating it so many times off camera that when you're actually on camera, it doesn't seem like a real conversation that you're having with somebody. Yeah. And people find that creepy um, and it's weird. And when you watch it back, you think, that's not how I talk. That's not what I sound like. Why am I pronouncing things like that even? So I think <laughs> one thing that with time that we learned was to plan the things that are important to plan like the hook the first 30 seconds what are you going to say what is the topic actually at hand make sure you get that across in a very entertaining manner so that people will stick around to watch the rest of the video but then also know what they're sticking around to watch yeah yeah on that video we said um something along the lines of this is Matt Queen's Bangkok restaurant, and we're going to try the spiciest thing on the menu. Yeah. So that's like, ooh, what, how spicy is it, you know? Very. <laughs> <laughs> really spicy. Very spicy. <laughs> and how much is Dylan going to suffer whilst eating it? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I took one for the team. But I think <laughs> I do like spice. And um, usually the meal that I get, the pad krapao, isn't that spicy. Maybe because Thai people aren't giving me the spice, but I've learned how to ask for more spice, and it's yeah. still not that spicy. But this place... <laughs> The sweated. actual mix that they used was like ghost chili, like some of the really, like, it wasn't pure Thai pad pao. It was like extreme. Yeah. If someone likes spicy food, you should go there. Oh, it was spicy. They also I had better like, levels. Uh, I had a lower one. <laughs> mm, yeah, I'm I, I'm not very good. I felt like you were in more pain than you let on, Dylan, during that video. I feel like you, you were like, oh, it's really spicy. But but I feel like there was more pain deep down. I feel like internally. <laughs> yeah. Um, you you know how much I can handle spice, mm -hmm. but that was is it was insane. I think it just kept growing and growing and growing. If 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 we'd done the video with me trying the spicy one, I think the video would have been two seconds long because it would have been me crying in the back, full of expletives. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It would have not gone down very well. But I think because he's so so good with spice, it made it seem like he was like, oh, this is not not terrible. But it's like any other regular person would have been like, my insides are burning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. We've heard yeah, that some people when they go there and um, they won't give them level five. Yeah, they refuse to give. Oh it. wow! Yeah, <laughs> they're like, no, no, you 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 get the one below. <laughs> I'd be so upset yeah. if I fa if I fancied myself as a spice head <laughs> and I went in there and they refused to give it to me. I would be livid. They were like, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's, yeah, that's something. But So it they gave it to it. you. They yeah. let you have it and it was worth it. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, doesn't water amplify the spice or at least yeah. not yeah. take it away? Well, it's the only thing we had at hand. Like we, we're okay. fully aware that like bread and milk helps. <laughs> He's lactose intolerant and we didn't have yeah. any milk at hand, nor does any of these places actually sell milk or bread. Yeah. So we didn't really have anything. Maybe we should have gone for, for a sweet drink because mm. obviously sugar is supposed to help. But... The only thing I was doing was just cooling, cooling my mouth, the mouth down for a yeah. second, you know? Mm. Um, just hold the water in there for a second. <laughs> But yeah. <laughs> <Bless him. laughs> yeah, but that that was kind of the video that 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 um, boosted us up because I think people watched that one and then realized that we had other ones that were also maybe not terrible, so they were watching them and it was kind of boosting those up, um, which was just which was great. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we were sure. just like watching the stats come in, and I think we were getting like seventy five thousand views a day. Yeah. And it was like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah. It was insane. Because when you think about it, like 75,000 people looking at you yeah. Yeah. in one day. Yeah. It's yeah. And like, now now that video, it, I, last time like I checked, it's 800k or something, yesterday. nearly. Yeah. Not quite. It's like 725k, I think. But like, okay. it's, you know, it's inching on. That's yeah. a lot. It's, 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 that's a lot and, of people. And you must clearly remember, like only a few months ago, you must have been looking at those analytics and seeing like, oh, today, 24 people watched our content well, or 12, 12 yeah, people. Actually, in Samui, we'd hit rock Just before, bottom, yeah. Um, where we kind of were stuck with our content. We didn't know what to record and we didn't record for like two weeks. Then we did a video and then it didn't do it that bond, well. Yeah. And at one point, I remember in one hour, we had something like three views, right? Mm. Which is very low compared to now, obviously. And then at one point, maybe a few weeks ago, we were getting 7,000 an hour. Yeah. Um, so it's like insane. the difference, The difference, you know, like a space of two months. Yeah. Can make. It went, yeah. it, 
it was it went crazy. Obviously, YouTube is up and. Sorry, if you can hear that, there's a car outside. <laughs> the the views do obviously go up and down. YouTube is a very organic yeah. platform that if you produce great stuff, people will watch it. If you produce something that doesn't isn't sought after or something that's not so great, then it's not going to be watched as much. So it's up and down constantly. But each up and down has its different levels of up and down. I think now when something's down, we just have to remind ourselves just a couple of months ago, our down was like way down here. And I think yeah. that helps to like push to make you want to improve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it also depends on how many videos we do a week. Yeah. At that point, we were making two a week because um, we just had ideas in our mind. Mm -hmm. um, but now we stuck to one video a week now yeah. just because it's been Christmas. Yeah. We haven't had that many ideas. So let's just take this time to kind of relax. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. So obviously your channel's still really new and you still have to work at it and you have to come up with new ideas and all that kind of thing. But the trajectory you're on, like you seem to be going very much in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. I think we, we, we don't take anything for granted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like we had one video a couple of weeks back that didn't do so well. And we we're like, okay, whoa. Yeah. Like people aren't going to just watch any any content that we do. I think we, yeah. we got a bit like, whoa, we're doing so well. We can post anything. And then it was yeah. like, no, you can't. Mm. Yeah. And then YouTube is quick to humble you. That That's for sure. And I think we just... Con luckily there's two of us so we always we speak about stuff like this very 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 often i mean i think at you know half of the day at least is spent either making a video editing a video or talking about a video or talking about the stats from a video we spend a lot of time talking about it and luckily there's two of us so we can you know one of us might have an idea and the other person will say well actually i don't think people will actually want to see that and i think a lot of channels are able to do this and a lot of people think that they can do just like it can just be us mm. doing anything and it will do really well and some people that will work for because they're great personalities yeah. and they're super entertaining and but it's also very beneficial that it's like two of us yeah in the same channel thinking about the same things rather than asking an outsider yeah because outsiders don't know what's mm -hmm. been going on in the channel like someone will say why don't you do a video about um this temple or yeah. go to this restaurant like why why would we go yeah. to that restaurant it doesn't make any sense who would watch that but i think that's <laughs> the the reason that's so good is because we are so hypercritical about what we do decide to do yeah. that is what somebody else might do that would get good views we would try and obviously this is just our own opinions so you know at the end of the day this could be somebody else's garbage mm. but what we try to do is just choose viral ish content yeah that could do well that people actually might get something from something find that entertaining. applies to a broader audience yeah. yeah like we don't want we don't we didn't want to do too much vlogging talking about ourselves because your audience has to be super um Into committed you, to yeah. you to do that and this way we get people just intrigued in the mm -hmm. actual topic rather than us and we're just showing them the topic yeah. and mm -hmm. then it can go to a wider audience because I think that's one of the reasons why we've decided not to have our channel name be like Adriana and Dylan because there's a, and I'm not saying that anyone that has their names as a channel is a bad thing. Obviously, it's great that you get more personal, but I think I'm happy for people not to know my name and just to enjoy our content. And then if they, you know, if they see us, they'll be like, oh, that's, you know, that's the blonde girl from that channel. It's like, that's mm. fine. Mm. They're not here to watch me talk about my family life, you know? And the channel name obviously makes sense for, yeah. the, for travel. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll give you that. Two passports, one dream. There you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you think we should we should jump into this AMA kind of section here? I think so. Like, sure. We obviously yeah. got a bunch of questions from your your guys, your followers on Instagram and on your YouTube uh, community thing, uh, mm -hmm. and so you forwarded me a bunch of those, so I've got them here. Um, so yeah, we can kind of go through go through some of those. All right. So um, so yeah, AMA. Let's go. Uh, so one, Dylan, where exactly yeah. in Wales are you from? I'm from Porth Madog in um, North West Wales. So if you're looking at a map of Wales and you've got the oh, the arm that goes out to um, Penhyn, uh, Porth Madog is right in the armpit. Wow. Which is not a great description. <laughs> armpit. Um, yeah, but 
Yeah, mm. it's really nice. It's beautiful. It's like it a, is beautiful. Um, it's got mountains all around. It's got a uh, harbor with boats. It's got a beach just next in the next town. It's picturesque. Really nice. Yeah, a lot of Sounds... lot of people come there on holiday. Mm. A lot of English yeah. people from like Manchester, Liverpool, Chester. Yeah, yeah. it's nice. No, it's just the, uh, the 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 North Wales, the capital of North Wales, tourist industry or something. <laughs> <laughs> and it's um, most of the time the hottest place in the UK. It's like because it's in that sort of. Um, yeah, you get record breaking uh, temperatures. temperatures there, yeah. Really, so that's nice. Summertime, yeah. obviously, yeah. the winter time is still cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's still in North Wales, but yeah, well, yeah, it's, it's cool that you get hot temperatures in the summer. Um, and then I, I wanted to ask, I mean, this one wasn't in the AMA, but I thought we got to balance it up. And I wanted to know exactly uh, where in Sweden is Adriana from? I'm from Helsingborg, which is in like um, southwest. So if <laughs> so, <laughs> so if Sweden is a long sausage, um, I'm like in the lower section of Basically, if you're looking at a map and Denmark is here and Sweden is here, yeah, it's not going to look anything <laughs> like what I'm showing. But if Denmark is here and Sweden is here, it's the, the bit that's quite, quite, quite close. So you can actually see um, Denmark if you just stand in my hometown. You can just see it across the water. Oh, wow. Cool. Mm-hmm. Nice. And is it kind of picturesque and everything or not so much? It is absolutely beautiful. Apparently, people have been calling it the new Stockholm of Sweden because they've spent a lot of money recently to doing it up. And it was meant to be... In 2030, it's meant to be like absolutely fantastic. It's oh, already wow. fantastic, I have to say. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's a harbor city as well, so it's got a beach. It's got you the know new the boats. Of my dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little bit bigger, I would yeah. say. Yeah. <laughs> Quite a bit bigger, <laughs> but it's lovely. Yeah. And I butchered <laughs> nice. the pronunciation on purpose. I thought it would be fun. Um, yeah. So <laughs> people call it. <laughs> a few questions about you guys, like your relationship. So uh, the quick one first would be how long have you guys been together? And secondly would be how did you first meet? Officially, we've been together two years. Our first date was the 21st of June June or July. I can never remember which July, one it is. July. 2019. 2018. 18. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But we so, kind of knew of each other before prior to that. that. Yeah. Um, so we we first met online on Tinder, but we didn't meet each other. Like yeah. we kind of just like messaged, you know, like hey, yeah, it didn't whatever. really go anywhere. But then we bumped into each other in a pub in Cardiff yeah. while I was celebrating my new job. And yeah, Adriana was celebrating. I did. I know. I was on a dentistry social. Dentistry social, mm-hmm. and then I was like, "Is that you?" And then we chatted, and yeah. then yeah. How long before you met did you see each other on Tinder? Mm, probably about a year. Yeah. That's crazy. I think it was wow. about a year and a half before we actually went on our first date yeah. from when we actually started. I speaking. kept asking if we can go on a date. She's like, no, can we go on a date? No. And then all of a sudden I was like, do you like, do you like roller coasters? And she said, yes. Shall we go to Thought Park? And she said, okay. And then we went on the sat- next Saturday. <laughs> I have to say, it's not because I didn't want to go on a date with him. I just wasn't sure what the in- what the intentions were because I was kind of looking for something serious. And then I thought, oh, actually, probably Tinder wasn't the right place for me to be. And now I found someone from there. But it turned out really well. And the first date, I mean, that was the first time we properly spent time together. And it was a commitment to go to Thor Park because driving there was like two hours. two hours. So we set off at like 7 a.m., Went to Thor Park, spent the whole day there, left when it closed at 10 p.m., drove back, got home at midnight. He dropped me off at home, I have to say. But like, Jeez. it was a long day. It was fantastic. Nice. I mean, that sounds like an yeah. awesome first day. I wish I was there. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I love roller coasters. <laughs> that sounds... would have been weird, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, it would have been, but I could have gone and done my own thing and, like, you know, yeah. catch you guys later. <laughs> Meet you at the exit. Yeah, good fun. And um, yeah. it worked out, so... Yeah. yeah, two years later, you're sitting in Thailand. Yeah, did you ever think that when you're when you're like waltzing around Thorpe Park, going on the uh, roller coasters? Did you ever think in two and a half years we're going to be sat in Thailand, uh, in the middle of doing our YouTube channel, talking to to no. Ben uh, on a yeah? I mean, we we always say to each other like, "Isn't it crazy that we do YouTube now?" Like we, I was I would never have thought no. a year well maybe not a year ago now, but like a year and a half ago. I would never have thought I'd be doing YouTube. Like I see these people on YouTube like, wow, they're so confident. They're so good at talking. Yeah. And then, you know, 
the first time we tried to speak to a camera, it was like, what are we doing? Oh, we pr- we practiced. There's And he's got the footage. We're not showing it to you, by the way. But like, there's old footage from like us, like, just like trying to speak to a camera. And it's just like, it was just for practice. It was never to go anywhere. And it's it's horrible. And sometimes we like cringe each other out by saying like, oh, do you want to watch the video we made like last <laughs> Christmas? And it's like, oh, no, I don't want to see it because hmm. it's actually, it's so But I bad. think it's, it's like a skill to know how to speak to a camera. It's like, you're just talking to someone as if they're Another not person. speaking back to you. Yeah. And you're just saying stuff. But they can't, they can't speak back. But it's like, it's having a certain level of asking questions and like interacting without them answering, answering you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just acting like it's a person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think once we started kind of thinking about it like that, we're like, this is the third person in the room. It's, come a lot more naturally but i <clears throat> i would have to say that when we first went on our dates like it was fun i mean it was awesome i think we got on so well i was like yeah like i could i wouldn't necessarily say that i'd see myself doing youtube in the future but i would have definitely said that i would see myself being with dylan in the future so cool yeah nice good answer um so this question could take <laughs> ages to answer but you could also do it pretty quickly i think so how do you guys stay in shape <laughs> We don't. We, um, oh come I, on! I got to, <laughs> yes, um, I, I so I I had a um a knee operation mm. um during uh COVID just before I, COVID actually and um I was out of action I like, couldn't walk for like six weeks and um I was running a lot just before that so I was pretty skinny I've been bigger in the past as in like going to the gym and stuff but then um this this operation meant I was like losing muscles in my legs and everything and I came down to around 62 kilograms yeah which is really really um low and then you know a few months later I gained a little bit back just normally then Mm -hmm. we went to Thailand I think I was like 64 or something yeah and then now we've just been going to the gym like three or four times a week now I'm 78 kilos yeah so I've put on like 14 kilos since I've been to Thailand but in not in yeah yeah no sticky rice no <laughs> yeah so like it's been great for me like yeah. gyms are open here yeah you know. i think obviously it's a difficult one to answer because it's like everything that happened during that first year of lockdowns was just chaos we yeah. were allowed outside for like half an hour per day so we were going for a lot of runs which obviously was beneficial for me but just made him get slimmer and slimmer um <laughs> So then like, it's kind of like the other way around. But I think <clears throat> basically just try to make time to go to the gym, try to make time to at least getting the nutrition that you need. Okay, yeah, extra treats. I get that. But like at least having your Unicorn five a day, cafe. having the fruits. Yeah. I mean, that was no fives a day. That was yeah. just straight E numbers, but it was fantastic. Mm. I loved it. Mm. <laughs> My teeth were aching and I was like, ah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's also a good start to the day to go to the gym. Yeah. Yeah. Get up early, go, and then you feel that you can take on, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So despite what it seems like in some of your sweet treat videos, you in fact try to eat a balanced diet and... uh, and, and... Oh, yeah. I think for those videos, we obviously, like, it doesn't make sense for us to be like, no, I'm not going to eat that because, you know, I'm watching what I eat or something. We we just want to have a good time. But most of the days when we're not filming, it'll be quite basic, boring. It'll be like, wake up, go to the gym... Mm-hmm. have a protein shake, have some breakfast, you know, be we do get quite balanced. A lot of comments of Thai people and they're trying to be super duper nice and they're like, if you eat too much Thai food, you will get fat. I was in <laughs> Thai and they, they're not meaning that we look fat it's, yeah, or anything. Yeah. They just, they're, they're trying to be nice. They don't want you to but get it's complacent. like you'll read that and you're like, yeah, yeah, you're just like, thank you. I'll, uh, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> just keeping you on the straight and narrow. Just, uh, yeah, just yeah. helping you out. <laughs> So, we, so we also look better in real life. Yeah, the camera. Yeah, the camera adds. adds a few pounds. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so who speaks the best Thai? Me. Dylan. Yeah. Okay, that was no I mean, hesitation. I, only, only, no. only because I do most of like the, the ordering, and the yeah. ordering, and like that kind of stuff. So I've just come into a yeah routine of doing it. Plus, like, I don't think I have the confidence to like. I don't want to get something wrong and like accidentally twist switch it up in my head and ask for the toilet whilst I'm asking how much it is or something so I just I'd rather not say anything in case I do get it wrong which means that I don't practice as much but yeah. he 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 does a really good job 
Yeah, because Thai, Thai, Thai is one of those languages. If you do, if you say it with a slightly wrong tone, yeah, it can mean it's a something completely different. Different word different. altogether. Um, yeah. Don't so, give the example. No. It's inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> So if if we dropped you off in the middle of nowhere, Dylan, in like a village in the middle of nowhere in Thailand where nobody spoke a word of English, how would you be able to get by? Would it be comfortable? Would it be like just about or how how would it be? Yeah, it would be pretty comfortable. I think I think like I could order food. I could ask where a shop is. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I think think also as a as people, the Thai people are very keen to try to understand what you're saying. So like you'll try to say something and they'll kind of like often fill in the blanks and mm. just, you know, assume what you're saying. Yeah. So they're not just like, no, don't know what that means. Thai people are not, like the nicest people ever. Yeah. Um, I think it's just in their culture to help. And if you if you do something good, you will get good back. Kind of yeah, thing. it's very karma-based society, yeah. which it's is really absolutely nice. lovely. Yeah, it's great when you're a nice person. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like you guys. Um, so how do you afford to travel full time? Um, so we like kind we touched of touched on, touched on earlier, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we we saved up hard, and by by that I mean like we cut out everything and anything. I think we allowed ourselves to have like one treat per week, which was like a coffee out and about, which is like three pounds. That's it. We had a really really strict like regime of like Excel sheets yeah. <laughs> where we put in exactly what we spent on every single thing that we spent. We cut out everything like. We had no Netflix, no Spotify, nothing like that. We cut everything out Mm -hmm. and saved every single penny. And then also had some side hustles on the side where we saved more money. Made more money. Made more money. Yeah. But also lockdown helped. Lockdown definitely helped Mm. because there was a lot of planning what you're going to cook. So we had very basic and boring meals for a very long period of time. But it definitely helped us to save up. And especially with like... The jobs that we had at the time, they paid quite well. So that also helped. But we saved super hard for a full year because we knew we had a goal of what we wanted to save. Mm-hmm. And the goal wasn't just, oh, we'll have more money. It was like the dream trip that could change our lives, you know. Yeah. yeah. And obviously, like we touched on earlier, my business. That definitely started helping towards yeah. the later end of the area. Yeah. yeah. And I suppose the fact that a lot of the time you're trying to live on a budget, you're trying to budget things well, um, you know, mm-hmm. the, like your book, you, you're trying to save some pennies. Yeah. yeah. And, so now that we're actually here, we still have, like, we saved up enough money, what we thought, to travel Southeast Asia. At the time, that was the plan, Southeast Asia for a year. We've been in Thailand now for just over a year, and we haven't used up all of the money that we saved up for it. Yeah. Mm. So it's something that we don't want to go down to zero. but as we're building up the YouTube, eventually one day we're hoping that each month will be able to pay for itself, so to speak. Um, yeah. And like a, a lot yeah. of people ask me, um, you know, how do you afford it? But I'm like, it's cheaper here it's than in the UK. Affordable what do you mean? To live here. Yeah. Like our our apartment and bills and car insurance and everything. From the and UK, most of our yeah. salary was gone. Yeah. And here, you know, it's a quarter of that. Um, yeah. yeah. I and mean, that's, food that's is, as, as you've seen from the food challenge videos, food costs are very, extremely very low. And like, you could get them even cheaper than that. And obviously, we eat a lot of things in those videos. You normally wouldn't have that many meals in one evening. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah I think sure. it's hard for people to understand that. And I don't think it's widely um, pushed by, you know, the UK because they don't want people to... To just leave and go to another country. <laughs> yeah, they want you stuck in your nine to five or your eight to six, yeah. more likely. Um, mm. I, I remember yeah. that when, um, when um, at the beginning of the pandemic, like Thailand had basically zero cases. They were doing really well. It was nowhere on the news in the yeah. UK. As soon as they had like 10 cases, it was all over the news. Yeah. <laughs> And people yeah. were like, oh my God, Thailand's not doing well. It's like 10 cases. That's like nothing. Yeah. And or still now, like the cases are going down. Like we're in a very... We're in a very lucky position to be able to be here, but also because we saved up all of that money and because we've been spending so little being here and managing it quite well, it means that we can continue to stay here for a bit longer. Yeah, yep. cool. On on that front, our next question touches on how long are you allowed to stay in Thailand and what's your kind of visa situation? 
Um, it's something that we are not usually super happy to discuss on camera, not because we don't want to disclose what visa we're on, but because it's so different for everyone. Mm. So some people might not be able to apply for the same visas and some people have had difficulties extending the same visas in the way that we have. Yeah. All I have to say is it's completely above board and we're allowed to stay here currently, but it is something <laughs> that we have to review every, every so often. Months. So we've just recently reviewed it and we've managed to extend for a further two months. But basically, that's how it works. In two months' time, we'll find out whether we can extend again. But again, like it's it's different from person to person, but there there's always more options mm -hmm. than are the ones that are just, you know, Google-worthy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we always have in the back of our mind that we might be leaving yes, in the next... so we try to... Yeah. Two, week, two months period. Yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of yeah. generally, you're kind of kicking it down the road a few months at a time, a couple of months at a time. Mm -hmm. And then so you get to live those few months as in like, yeah, it might be our last in Thailand. Cool. Yeah. Um, if you could each pick one accommodation that you've stayed at uh, in Thailand to, to go and revisit, to stay another night at, which which one would it be? Um, and I guess I'd want to ask the same question about restaurants as well while you're there kind of like okay. your brains. Um, okay. Whoever gets one first, just jump in. I think the Anantara Rasananda. Oh, that was so good. We we stayed in the most gorgeous, I would call it like a villa. It was a hotel resort, but that had a villa in it. We were really lucky to be invited to stay there. It's the one and only time that we actually got a free hotel stay and we actually accepted a free hotel stay because often people try to have a stay in their hotels, but they don't necessarily suit the camera. Anyway... We stayed at a place in Kopangan, uh, which was called Anantara Rasananda, and they gave us a private villa, and it was the most luxurious place I have ever stayed in. It was beachfront, private pool, huge. Like it open was, air bathroom. It, it was. It was very Bali yeah. vibes, it, and you had like your own butler. It was insane. It was like very honeymoon vibes. It was yeah. per like perfect. I loved that place, but it was definitely on. If you paid for it, it was a very, very high end um, mm -hmm. on the financial yeah. side. <laughs> Are you going to pick one or should go to um, restaurants? I think the place that I would want to go back and stay, um, probably just because it was so cozy and it smelled so good. You know which one I'm going to say, don't you? Mm -hmm. It was called Kate and Hasu. It was like a, when we did a, a hotel challenge series back in the beginning of our channel, um, each week we went up 10 pounds to stay in different hotels. And this one was a 20 pound hotel. But it was so nice. It smelled amazing. Every time I smell grapes now, I think of that hotel. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it smells, it was so nice. The bed it was, was super comfy. The people were bed really was comfortable. Nice. They were, it was, they kept coming with like little cups of tea and like Fruits. little drinks and food for us. It was, it was awesome. I I, even that. once I, I, I went, can I, can I get two beers please? And they were like, free. Oh you. yeah. Oh, I was like, what? And they would like run down the road to the shop and get you stuff. It was it was really cute. I had a nice yeah. pool as well. So yeah, yeah. that was In awesome. In terms of restaurants, like I really, really, really like um, just a really good Thai restaurant. There was one in Koh Samui that was extremely cheap. Have you got it on camera? Did we film it in a video? Um, yeah, we did. And it was, you know, like one pound for an amazing... Which one was that? Um, the one I always ordered like, oh, every yeah. single day. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> And it was just the perfect flavors for me. I just absolutely loved it. And for I think, one pound. Yeah, I think like Thai food is one of those things that like the more you pay isn't the better it gets. Like if you, because they have such quality ingredients here, you could literally pay a pound and get the most fantastic meal of your life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was fantastic. I don't even know the name of it, to be honest. But Yeah, a lot of them don't even have names written in English. They're just fully on Thai, but mm -hmm. it was awesome. Cool. How about you? <laughs> To, to be honest, there's too many good places to count. I, re I really like all of them, I have to say. Like, I just like tasty foods. I liked, um, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the video then, but like we went to a retired airplane that became a fine dining restaurant. Oh, yeah. I think I've seen that. That was yeah. cool. Yeah, it was, it was a really cool experience because you were in like an old airplane and it wasn't one of the cafe ones. It was like very fancy looking, but then the food was like proper fine dining. Um, I love was, my dining. That was cool. I I, I love aeroplanes. Like <laughs> yes, I'll, it was like the perfect mix. <laughs> I'll stand and watch aeroplanes in the sky. I'll check apps and stuff. So yeah, being inside an airplane is really cool. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. nice.
You'll have to send me the links for these. I'll try and get all these links down yeah, in the description yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. And hopefully everybody's <laughs> going to go and check them out. Um, somebody wants to know, why did you choose Bangkok as your hometown? Like as your kind of uh, base? Um, it's not necessarily... Um, it At the moment, obviously, it's our base. But we've kind of... It's because we started off in Bangkok. And I think people often skip it and go to, down to the islands. And then we did kind of the same thing when we first came out of quarantine. We were in... Bangkok for such a short period of time and then we went to Samui and then back up to Chiang Mai then back down to Samui and we stayed in each place for so long um, and each time we came to Bangkok they had just because the Thai people are very proactive so as soon as any numbers go up in terms of uh, people falling up unwell they would put down a lot of restrictions so last time we came back only. yeah so last time we came to bangkok it was like nothing was open we thought we really want to stay and give it a proper chance so we left straight away went down to the south where things were more open because obviously they're islands they can regulate things in a better way so now when we're back in bangkok it's just it's a gorgeous city it's a metropolitan city a lot of people think of it as just like the the back streets and like it's messy and loud and it is loud and hectic and intense and smelly at times but There's also lots of it, stuff on offer yeah but like it smells great at times too it looks awesome it's there's so many people it's like yeah we wanted to be here for christmas yeah so there was like a few weeks until christmas like should we just go now yeah like, instead of going somewhere else first so we just decided to go i'm, I'm really happy we did because it's and there's a, a lot of content to do yeah, here. a lot of mm. things to do. So a lot we of kind of follow do. the content. Yeah, and if it if we run out, you know, like we've got plans to do a little series in a few weeks, but mm -hmm. we'll be going somewhere else um, because we've planned some content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. I mean, talking of that content and following the content, what are some of the the next question? What are some of the, your favorite places you visited in Thailand? Uh. Chiang Mai is yeah, definitely like Mai. a really cool, nice place. Not when it was burning. No, but... so that sounds really strange if people don't know what you're talking about. So Chiang Mai has what would essentially be called like a burning season. It's not necessarily just Chiang Mai, but because it's so far up north near the border of Burma, Burma, where they burn a lot of fields, it's like technically illegal burning. They shouldn't be burning these fields, but all the smoke how it kind of it kind of congregates over of Chiang Mai and like the it's like a hazardous level of smoke mm. you can't really see the sky for months on end and it really smells and it's really unhealthy for you so a lot of people just leave Chiang Mai and go down south we decided to go to Chiang Mai at that time which was not a good idea because we didn't enjoy it in that sense but we loved Chiang Mai so much we stuck it through the burning season and mm. then when we came out and the skies were blue again <clears throat> it was absolutely yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like a small city and you can get from one side to the other pretty quickly. Yeah. There's lots on offer, there's shopping centres, there's it's coffee. It's very welcoming for digital nomads in the sense that there's a lot of workspaces, they have a lot of cafes. It's mm -hmm. it's just really nice. Yeah. I love Chiang Mai. I do. Yeah, nice. yeah I, can tell, I can tell you like that place. On your videos, you always sound so happy when you say the name of Chiang Mai. Uh, yeah. both, both of you, you're like, uh, it's something about it. It comes through. <laughs> you can tell you're happy. Yeah, right? And really oh, warm. That's nice. Well, when we were there, it was really warm. Yeah. And there's like no wind there. That's, oh. why, the, well, that's why another reason the smoke yeah. sits <clears throat> there. He, gathers, he just sits yeah. there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other places worth a notable mention? I mean, there's going to be some well, similar Bangkok, questions. Bangkok, obviously. We, yeah. We do love Bangkok. Bangkok. Uh, yeah, exactly. Obviously, Bangkok. But then I, I do really like Koh Samui. I think people wrongfully often call it like a bit of a fancy island where just like the rich people go and maybe that was the case in the past i i don't know i can't really speak on it but like the first time i went i was think i was 15 and now is the first time i've gone since then so it's been so like been over 15 years since i went back but it's it's just really beautiful beaches really welcoming people really delicious food yeah and we could see it without like all the traffic and yeah people yeah overcrowding yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Basically every place we've been to we've loved, so <laughs> yeah. yeah. So which place which place would you or places would you most recommend to somebody that's visiting Thailand for the first time or somebody that just has no idea where to go and they, they want to kind of see the okay. country? Bangkok, Chiang Mai, Koh Samui. Yeah, probably Phuket. Probably Phuket, Koh although Pee -Pee. yeah, Koh Phi Phi. 
Kotao, Kopangan, Ko Samui. Yeah, so they got a long itinerary Krafi, of places to go to. <laughs> the whole country. <laughs> Pai was nice also. Pai is very, very nice. Yeah. Quiet though, right? It depends if a you like going places. off the beaten yeah, path. Yeah, like, it's good. Yes, it is quiet in Pai. <laughs> we, we like to stay on the path, uh, on the beaten path. Like, yeah. We don't really like going off, but... There are a lot of places that are like, that would never be in the tourism industry. So equally yeah. now, they haven't really changed much with tourism kind of going down. But they're all, those are also not necessarily the places that we would visit just because they're not as... Tourist friendly. Tourist friendly. Not, not, not the people, but like those yeah. signs in English. Like yeah. The staff wouldn't probably speak English. So if yeah. you had an issue with something, it would be a little bit of trouble. Yeah. yeah. So it's a little bit easier in these kind of places. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. But there's plenty of choice. You said you like to stay on the beaten track and things like that. I am hoping, though, that one day, sandwiched in between two five star hotel videos, so it's going to be like a we spent a night in a jungle. Um, yeah. or, <laughs> You know, just like a really random... We, we tried living at the side of the road in this obscure village. Um, yeah. Just something totally yeah. out of place. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see you guys off the beaten track with it, without your yeah. shower and luxury. Maybe uh, once our tie is a little bit better. Yeah, <laughs> once our tie is a bit better. Uh, but we'll, I've already we'll got you on record like saying you, you can cope in a village if you're dropped in. He uh, could, so. but not me yet. So mm, we're going to have to wait for that. You can stay in the hotel <laughs> if, if you're doing yeah. it. Perfect. Sorry, but there's also there's also <laughs> dialect as well um in thai there's loads of them like the south mm, yeah don't have, like oh there's like the the middle of thailand don't understand the people from the south and mm. yeah the north is like chinese influenced and there's a lot of yeah. influences everywhere mm. so it depends where you go but we may have to go stay in a jungle at some point i hope so we i'll be in some be junglish places some junglish yeah, five-star we've hotels some, we've stayed no, no, no. We've stayed in, in some little tree, tree houses. houses to, yeah, yeah. I've seen yeah. the tree houses. They're good. They're good. There was two tree houses and one of them was properly in the jungle. Yeah. So. But you got to do I one without know. the tree house. So. Okay, just a tree. <laughs> just a <the> hammock. <laughs> yeah, you can get a few tips from my uh, my last guest. He's, he's walking around the world. He, uh, he's doing the full like around the world with all on foot. Wow. Um, he won't yes. return home to England until he walks there. Uh, and he started at the <laughs> bottom of South America. Um, How does so he cross oceans? He he walks walked across the, the Bering Strait, uh, which is like ice slush, basically. Freezing Arctic ice and slush. Wow. Uh, he walked across like 57 miles <laughs> of like sounds terrible, in, yeah. in the frozen water and then on an ice, on an ice, you know, like a, not an iceberg, it's just a bit of ice and then back in the water, back on some ice and just like grueling uh, for days and days. Wow. Um, I mean, you're not selling it to us. I don't think we're going to be planning to do that anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> but Maybe not the Bering Strait. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Um, Okay, so we've got some lighter questions now. So how many kilograms, mm. how many kilos of luggage do you carry when you travel? Are you light travelers? Um, Too many. No, we're not light travelers. <laughs> and I, there's a reason for that. So obviously, on camera. one hand, we have all of the tech. Yeah, so there's the camera, there's the drone, the gimbal, all of those things that are heavy. But the then gimbal. on What's the, the other hand, uh, a gimbal. It's um, like a stabilizer. It's like a, sta it's like a mm, mechanism yeah. that stabilizes mm. camera. Cool. It's... Um, it's also heavy, um, not super heavy, but all of the things add up and then the laptops and things like that. But then on the other hand, we also have Dylan, who's type one diabetic. So he's got a lot of bags of like needles and things like that, that he needs um, for his medication. So mm -hmm. that takes up usually half of his suitcase. Yeah. Um, but if we didn't have that, I reckon we would solidly have probably 20 kilos each. But at and the moment, helmets as well. yeah, um, yeah, we have our helmets. But at the moment, that's very much not true. We're not light travelers right now. We actually have a storage unit that we've um, rented here in Bangkok where we can leave a lot of our oh, stuff cool. so we can travel more lightly with just yeah. a few things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But without the storage unit, you are not light travelers. Got it. <laughs> we could we could carry it all on ourselves, but it would literally wreck our knees. Yeah. I think. Yeah, and probably take down the quality of the videos because you'd all of a sudden not be as happy, you'd not be as light feeling. Yeah. Like, oh. How's it going? One time, <laughs> but one time we had to actually carry all of our stuff from yeah. Chiang Mai to Bangkok because we were we hadn't had the storage unit yet. Yeah. I had a big bag on my front and the huge 
um, yellow North bag on the back. One. You had a bag on your front. On my front and, and one on the, the back. back. And, and then we also had bags in our hands. I couldn't even fit through the door onto the train. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw yeah. that the other day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was funny. It was intense. I wanted to shove you. I wanted to help you through the door. I'm like, somebody yeah. push that yeah. man. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and then we have people in the comments saying, why have you got so much stuff? You don't need that much stuff. Yes, yeah. we do actually need that much stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is because of the things like we just said. Obviously, if we were just traveling for, for, for fun without filming anything and if he didn't have diabetes, you know, type diabetes, then we would probably have just regular bags. Yeah, I reckon keep taking your medical stuff with you, Dylan. I reckon that's a good idea. Right? Yeah. I, th- it's, I feel it's important for some reason. Yeah. yeah, and and you may as well keep the videos going too. So there you go. Anyway. Why not? Right. <laughs> um, you kind of some just... people also. Sorry, some people also um, only vlog on the phone. Yeah. But we vlog with a camera. Yeah. And the draw with different phone. lenses and everything, so it does add. It becomes yeah. a production. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it's worth it. Mm. Yeah. Definitely yeah. worth it. Cool. Um, so you kind of just hinted to the next question, like two seconds ago two minutes ago um about the helmets but i thought it was a great question it's the one on everybody wants to know right so the, the, <laughs> did you put the stickers on the moped helmets or were they already there <laughs> no we put them on ourselves before we, we actually bought the helmets before we even went to thailand because i had a long list of things that we wanted to get and we had like we i mean we have so many things we have like head torches we have like fluorescent arm straps and stuff Always like we, we got a lot of yeah, we got a lot of like security things and like things that would be good for us to have in a moment of need, like first aid kits and all of that kind of stuff. But the helmets was one of those big purchases that we were like, we have to buy these because helmets quite often when you rent a bike or a moped here yeah. in Thailand, they're like little tin tin cans, you know, on yeah. your head. They've been and they're huge and like they're not gonna maybe save your brain if no. if that moment is needed. So we got the helmets and then we got the stickers because they looked boring without. You, yeah. they, they look and, really and cool with the stickers. Yeah, you put yeah, them on really right? nice. People seem to love um, them. Yeah, yeah we, we love them because like, we saw this question that somebody had sent about the stickers and, and my, my girlfriend Harmony is like, oh yeah, I really want to know about the stickers. And I, I wanted to know about the stickers. <laughs> I, from watching it the other day, I was like, did they do this? I don't know. They're really nice. They look really nice. Yeah. So, yeah. I didn't think you did for we what it's worth. I, I said, I think yeah. they were like that where you rented it. I thought it was... No, like the, uh, we, we bought them. So we could technically get new stickers and stick some new ones. They're getting a little bit sun bleached, I have to say. But yeah. we haven't used the helmets since we've been in Bangkok. So mm. We don't want to rent a bike here in Bangkok. So that would be probably quite dangerous. But they're just sat right here just waiting for us to get a bike again. Nice. Well, you need to yeah. get a bike then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to get like a Have You Met sticker made and send it to you and you can put it on your Yeah, helmet. no, we'll, we'll put it on for sure. We'll put it on. <laughs> that would be cool. Um, so what were your, and this is for either of you, both of you or whoever wants to answer this, um, best, worst and craziest memory of 2021? Hmm. Best. Worst. I mean, everything's been really, like nothing's been that bad. Everything's been really good. Mm. So I, I can't really think of anything that was. I don't know, just best. It's just like how the YouTube's going. Yeah, and, yeah. Like just and the fact that like, I mean, we already knew that we we got on really well because we were actually in lockdown together in the UK before we even and we lived together, obviously. But like, I think one of the best things, it's probably that working together now, like fully on working together, living together, basically being on top of each other twenty four seven is working really really well and so that's like i mean that's maybe not a memory necessarily but like that's something really good that's come out of 2021 craziest one we went jet skiing oh that was fun we went jet skiing from koh samui to koh pangan um which is like two different islands yeah yeah and it was like it was a wavy day oh it was so much fun well i'd been on a jet ski before i'd never driven one yeah we could go like full throttle like yeah. waves, we were jumping up the waves. Yeah, we were oh. catching some serious air. It was nice. that was so that was, cool. That was, yeah. I've never been on a jet ski. I would love oh, to. It sounds eesh. like a lot of fun. It's so it was, fast. They were very fast. I think they were we went very to like fast. Eighty kilometers an hour. Or yeah, something. and it feels way faster because you're so low on the water. Oh my god. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You get splash. You're like yeah, ah. Okay. Um, what yeah. was the other question? Best, Best worst, worst, craziest. Oh, I don't know. I can't think worse. of anything bad. By the way, you said the name of um, the the place you went to on the island. What was it called then? The Copanyan. 
Yeah. Copanyan, that is that, was that's another the name island. of the mainland, the mainland from the film The Beach, right? That's the name of the place they go. So Copanyan is an island, um, but it's to them so, it's the mainland compared to their little is it or something? I think I'm pretty sure. Maybe 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 uh, they Co- just named it something. Uh, the beach is in, um, on the other side where Copipi is. Well, yeah, but they Maya they beach. travel. They when they leave the beach, they go to like get supplies and stuff. They go to Copanyan. Maybe I thought, they go. Maybe, I, I thought they did. I haven't seen that in a while. I haven't seen well, the film. I'm going to have to rewatch it. You have seen out. it though, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just haven't yeah, seen it. Yeah, we're all going to have to watch it. Yeah, yeah. We've all seen it. <laughs> I'm going to be right. It. I know I'm going like, to be right. Before I came to Thailand <laughs> first time. But anyway, yeah, Kopangan is lovely. That's where that hotel was that his favorite, the Antara Sananda was on Kopangan. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. So any other entries for the best, worst, craziest memories or should we move on? Nothing mm. bad has happened. So it's going to no, be kind I, of similar, I... the next one, a little bit. Mm. This is a little bit Hit my Hit me input. with the next one. I wanted to yeah. know if you had like a scariest memory, if there was a moment where you were like, oh, like everything, something bad was going on. If there was a moment where maybe it was to do with Visa, maybe it was to do with, you know, you lost the other person in the, in the middle of the town at night or yeah. I don't know what I it could have been. We've, we've been really lucky. Nothing comes to mind. Like we've been really lucky every time, like with the visas and stuff. It's always been like a little bit nerve wracking, but nothing's ever gone badly. Yeah. It's never been like, oh, it's a make or break moment. Mm. Everything transport wise has gone very much to plan. Nothing's been delayed. Nothing mm. like bad has ever happened. No one's ever been intimidating. Nothing's been scary. We haven't had any accidents. The worst thing that happened was that when you got whiplash from going surf skating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's like the worst. So that's, I mean, obviously that was bad for you. It like, hurt your neck. But like, that's the worst thing that's happened thus far. Well, I long mean, may that continue. Word. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Dylan's trying to think of thinking. something no. and he's saying that. No. Yeah, we're like, know, has just... something bad happened? I don't... May have repressed it. <laughs> yeah, we probably repressed it. Something probably has happened. <laughs> it was so <laughs> bad. That, yeah, it's totally gone. <laughs> yeah, it'll come back to me tonight. I'll be like... <gasps> <laughs> what about lessons learned? Like, are there any lessons you've learned this year? Either, again, to do with traveling, YouTubing, or something totally unrelated. Any any lessons learned this year? Um... Or none? <laughs> A lot of lessons. A lot of every, lessons. Every, you know, like you said earlier, like with every video we've done, we've learned yeah. how to change, how to improve. Um, we've learned a lot of things, but I, I don't think there's been any like life changing lessons. Yeah. Other than like sometimes you can't plan the stuff that's not planable. Like you can't you can't plan your whole lives. So you just kind of have to go a little bit with the flow. Um, Maybe one lesson mm. is that at the beginning we would shoot a video or make a video just because we needed to fill a gap yeah but then we were stressing ourselves out too much oh, we need to do this video and then on wednesday we need to do that video but then we then it takes realized... away the enjoyment i think because yeah. then at the end of the day you're kind then you're doing something for a video and you're not enjoying the process and it yeah. comes across and then you hate it and everyone hates it and it's just bad yeah so we decided you know let's just do videos we actually want to do and yeah. if we don't have an idea, let's take the time off yeah. and not stress ourselves out. Yeah. Um, I think at one point in Samui, we um, said to ourselves, okay, let's take a break now. And then, because we'd be doing two videos a week for mm-hmm. probably about two, three months. Yeah. And then we realized, whoa, we haven't sat down and watched the movie yeah. for months. Yeah. Because we hadn't enough time. Like we'd We editing... literally spent that whole week just watching TV and relaxing and taking yeah. it super easy. And I think people often forget us included that youtube although it seems like oh wow like lucky for you you just like do youtube it's like there's everything is behind the scenes Mm. people only see a 13 minute snippet of of what you've actually ended up producing there's so much behind the scenes it is very time consuming it's very stressful because it's so many unknowns and i think we've become more aware of the fact that we need to take breaks sometimes like little like timeouts just to spend time with each other and ha- just like that's why we've got this holiday plan that we've got going on on this Monday. This is the first time we're taking a holiday. And people are like, holiday from your holiday. That's stupid. But it's the first time we're going to go somewhere and not capture it on camera yeah. and not plan something like that. But literally just going to like have a nice relaxing time. Yeah. I'm super just hope excited. we get good weather. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed for good weather. Would there be anything that would convince you to get the camera out? You know, like if something wild starts happening around you, are you going to have the camera ready or is it a fully like we, we, no camera? We don't vlog it's, like that. Yeah, like, 
we wouldn't i mean unless like unless we had the camera with us and like the whole island was on fire that's what i'm talking I don't about think, something like that yeah well we could then if, use our phones you know, yeah like, we'd probably use our phones next. <laughs> we've got no, iPhones, so i think we we really it's like a no no we like we're not we're relax, not going to switch off we're fully relax and switch off yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, because like you said, even you guys kind of sometimes forget, you know, how much goes into behind the scenes when you're watching videos. Mm -hmm. And and me too, like, you know, I I can watch videos, even your videos, and, you know, you you forget how much can actually go into it. And then, yeah, like we said earlier, with little drone shots and things like that, when you add up everything... Yeah, like it's a full-time job, isn't it, basically? Uh, Yeah. I think we get get comments on it. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. oh, of course. We (laughs) we love it. And, like, it's very lucky that even though it's... We treat it like a job. It's yeah. a it's a job we very much enjoy. Yeah. It's not comparable to the nine to five jobs we had previously, mm-hmm. yeah. because that was being done primarily for financial gain. Whereas this is done for a mixture of like fun and also it's a really big bonus that we do end up getting. Yeah, an income. From like it. we get comments every now and then that's like get a real job or you know. Yeah. yeah those those things, but if they only knew. I do probably five times more work now than I did my in my real job. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but also it's like it's just jealousy, isn't it? It's just uh, they yeah. see what they see on the screen and they're just jealous. Yeah. What like what what somebody wants to say back to them is is you know how about if if you think I'm not doing a real job and you're jealous of it, how about you don't do a real job? Think think about yeah. what you can do that's not an eight to six, yeah. a nine to five, yeah, uh, soul sucking exactly. uh, office job. Yeah. Because it's not, it's it's that classic thing. It's like, oh, if somebody realizes, oh, my, this guy gets paid more than me, he should get paid less because I, I, I don't do much less yeah. work. No, it's you should be paid more. Everybody's not paid enough. Yeah. Nobody's paid yeah. enough. It's that same kind of thing. It's, uh, yeah. Exactly. It's a, yeah. I but think that must be frustrating it, for you. We were really lucky. We're really, really lucky that we don't get a lot of negative comments um, because they're very few and far between. So when we do get them now, they phase us a lot less because we, you, we used to get them. We've seen them all. We've we've seen them all. I mean, like, there's people that are just like, I, I hate her face, or like, I was gonna watch this video, but her voice is annoying, and it's like, there's, you know, oh, there's like eyebrows. Yeah, the people don't seem to like our eyebrows for some reason. I don't understand. People I think, think they're fabulous. Our but... eyebrows are not real. <laughs> they're too quaff. We get a lot of comments. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're too unrealistic. Eyebrows. But all that being said, I think it's like if you're comfortable with who you are and what you do and what you put out there then no one can touch you. But like with the content that we said to you before, so when we were just trying to push it out, if somebody had said, luckily this didn't happen, but if somebody said, ugh, this is a bit boring and random, why did you do this? That would have hit home because it's like, yeah. I agree with that. <laughs> but luckily we're very comfortable within ourselves, mm. with each other. So, I mean, like people might say like, she's with you for your money. And it's like, what are you talking about? That's like such a random... I've got no money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no but we're like we're equally financially stable so yeah. you know people don't know what they're talking about but if you're comfortable within yourself and within that situation then nothing can touch you and you can just be like all right let's just remove this comment it's just someone being a little bit mean yeah i i had a comment on my it was hardly mean but i had a comment on i think it was my second video that was just literally blah as if like <laughs> yeah i don't know if i like uh i don't know if i got it right but i'm pretty sure that was how it was how it was written but you're not going to impress everyone anyway. yeah you're no, not going to exactly. impress everyone but we've always said to each other like once you start getting people disliking or saying something negative it's like one they're commenting so that's great for the algorithm they're obviously watching it so and it's gone to a great wider thank you mm. it, it's exactly it's going to a wider audience because if you're just getting this is great i love you and it's like, okay, maybe that's just like our family members. And then a greater audience, if they, you know, the greater the audience is, like the, the Mark Wiens video that's gone to a much greater audience, that one gets a lot of people that are giving us all sorts of negative comments uh, from the color of our skin to like uh, how we sound, how we look. That There's nothing that you can do to please everyone. I'm not going to change myself. Many, Dylan's not going to change many himself. Many comments about the type of chili and I was there on the top. <laughs> People to, were so angry about that. I used that. to grow my own chilies, okay? <laughs> so um, he knows. <laughs> but, like, bird eye chilies. Um, I said they were bird eye chilies on top of the uh, pot de pao. I remember. And people were like, they're not bird eye chilies, they're Thai chilies. The f- if you Google bird eye chilies, the first thing that comes up is Thai chilies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're exactly the same. I think people just want to say something and to get a response out of yeah. you. And I think because we try 
really hard to respond back to everyone maybe they see that like oh, they'll see this or they'll respond back to this and like haha like i'll knock them down a peg or two but realistically all we're gonna do to a really crappy comment we used to give them at the time of day but now we're like whatever i'm not gonna respond back to this person that clearly hasn't even watched the full video it's mm, like yeah. they're just wasting their time at the end of the day yeah, yeah. um favorite thai dish and drink Oh, pad krapao for me easy, but I also like the fried chicken. Do you want to um, explain what pad krapao is? It it's like a minced chicken, minced pork, like with very spicy Thai basil, um, oyster sauce, soy sauce, spicy mm. um, on rice um, with an egg on top usually, and it's lovely. And the fried chicken, it's it's like better than KFC in some places. <laughs> yeah, the way they more. make it and. It's like, <laughs> It's, it's um, very popular in southern Thailand. You'll see these stands everywhere. And yeah, they like have this, it everywhere. The skin is super crispy. And like you can have any part of the chicken you want. Like leg, mm. wing, thigh, neck, head. Like they, yeah. some of them. Oh, Feet. So put, put that on, on sticky rice. Mm, lovely. <laughs> um, I think... Awesome now. <laughs> uh, you're, you're making me hungry. I don't even eat chicken. Um, <laughs> I think... My favorite is probably a pad siu. I think this is like a slightly less known dish when it comes to like the broad Western world because I think everyone knows like a pad thai. Yeah, you wouldn't and... see pad siu on a UK thai menu. No, right? but a pad siu is essentially another noodle dish, but it's like a really wide, flat noodle. Um, it's like a soy sauce based dish, but it's very sweet. It's so smoky it's, as well, it's smoky, it? sweet, um, salty. Usually it's not very spicy, but you usually cover it with chili flakes. It is just yeah, really they, tasty. They get the smokiness from the, the wok. They like, mm. get the flame and then they get... Oh, the it is here. actually fantastic. And mm. it's such a like a hearty noodle dish. Yeah. Mm. Drinks. Um, with, there's, these, there's these tiny energy drinks, right? <laughs> they're like 10 baht, which is about 20 pence UK. And um, they're just concentrated... Um, Energy drink, but yeah. no, no, um, fizzy. no carbonation. I was yeah. going to ask you if they're they, fizzy. Okay, they just taste no. so but they, sweet. It's like very, very kind of like a hint of like tasting like medicine, mm. but in a very sweet, delicious way. I actually love them too. They are the taste of Thailand they are not for us. Healthy. They're very unhealthy, and like tourists maybe don't drink them so much, but you'll see every single work like working class. Thai, like a builder. Yeah, or like all of them are drinking drivers. them. They're, the bottles, once you see them, you can't unsee them. They're everywhere. Just like e- every bin will have at least 20 in it. They're yeah. everywhere. And it's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's just, it's a nice. Cause, cause, <laughs> really bad for you. Because it's so sunny and hot. Guilty pleasure. You need something. Yeah. You need something yeah. to pick you up. And they're super cheap, super quick to drink. And like, we try to make make them like not a daily thing. We try oh, to make yeah. them maybe once a week, if that. But we used to have them. Every day, we bought them way too often, and <laughs> we decided not to because they're not good for your teeth, and they're not good for your insides. They're not and good for they're anything. Not good for you, except keeping no. you awake, I imagine. Um, yeah. yeah. On on this question, I'm gonna have to add in a little one of my own. And what's like the weirdest thing that either of you have eaten? It doesn't. You don't have to both answer. You can if you want. But like the weirdest or most bizarre food you've tried. I've had a scorpion. Before. What was that like? Mm. Um, just tastes like burnt eggshells it was not good um i think the weirdest thing that i've had is um, we went to a cooking class and the lady bought um, it's called a century egg which is just like this egg that's been um like fermenting um Mm. in this like uh, sulfur vibes for a hundred days um so when you actually get it out of the shell it's like gelatinous black and black it's not cooked it's just like that's just what it looks like then so it's like gelatinous dark dark brown really salty very pungent. very pungent yeah uh, it's a delicacy here people do love it um, i think it comes from chinese influence again but it was probably the weirdest thing that we've tried i wouldn't necessarily go out of my way to eat it again no yeah yeah i saw that video it, it... Not really my thing. It doesn't seem like my thing. <laughs> no, I don't. Th- I think a lot of people would say the same thing. It's not really. I would try uh, it. Something like you that tried they... it. You said it tasted yeah. like egg mostly, but yeah, yeah. It, but like, which it is. But it's just like a very, very, very eggy egg. Very eggy, yeah. Mm, yeah, like yeah, you're stood in a volcano a eating an egg. Mm, it's yeah. like, huh, 
Yeah. yeah. I'm not a fan yeah. of mushroomy mushroom. I'm not a fan of eggy egg. You know, I, I like both independently, but right? not, not the strong version yeah. of said things. Egg is fine, but like the uh, hybrid mm. version is just too mm. much. No, no <laughs> we'll leave that. Okay. Um, so what have been your best experiences thus far? And what is an experience that you would not repeat and why? Kind of three questions. Mm. Yeah. Oh, so that's a good question. Best experience. Um, it's not me. I didn't come up with that. That's one of your wonderful followers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> It's been nice to meet lots of other YouTubers. Yeah, and make I, we've made some actual way. friends. I think obviously you can't like everyone that you meet, but we've been really lucky that the the few people that we have met, we've really connected with. Um, mm. So that's really, really nice. Yeah, because obviously in these times now, it's hard to meet people because... Yeah, when we, when we first met like our first YouTube couple, so to speak, it was like, how do we communicate with strangers? We'd only really spoken to each other for the longest time. Mm. It was like, we've forgotten how to speak. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, that's, that was really, really nice. Mm. What's yeah. something that you wouldn't repeat? Um, the century egg. <laughs> Nah, I mean, it wasn't that bad. Come on, it's got to be something worse. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm trying to think. I feel like we've been really lucky this <laughs> probably, time around. Like, we've had a good year. Would, wouldn't go to Chiang Mai at that time again. Yeah, we wouldn't go through smoky season in Chiang Mai again just because it was so. I, I, it, it's hard to explain it. Like, your eyes are burning, your everything, like, your skin is terrible. It's just smoke everywhere. And, yeah. like, you have to buy, like, air purifiers to leave at home. You can't open your windows. Yeah. That was. That was quite uncomfortable yeah that sounds pretty awful okay so that's the one you're not going to repeat good good decision yeah um <laughs> this this was probably my favorite question that somebody sent in so what would you change in our world if you had the power to change anything oh that's wow. a nice question i don't even think i saw that one <laughs> um what if we had power to change anything? What would you change in our world if you had the power to change and anything in capitals, anything? I mean, I think just like th thinking about right now, I think the mm -hmm. big thing at hand is obviously like you know what's going on that's kind of ruining mm. everyone's yeah time, making everyone financially unstable. The and virus that must well. not be named. Yeah, the, exactly <laughs> yeah. that who who should not be named. I think just gone. Yeah, maybe like. So no one's hungry. Yeah, and then also there's like world too. hunger, mm. which is also a very good one. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. You can have one each, I guess. <laughs> okay, I'll take I'll I'll take uh, that who should not be named, and you can take world hunger, and then we'll join forces to create yeah. a better place. Yeah, I mean it wouldn't be fixed, but it'd be a much better place to live. There you go. So that's, that's yes, something. yeah, yeah, <laughs> progress. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah good. I like it. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> Yeah, thank you, guys. Um, <laughs> so, what are the what are the big plans for 2022 and the future? What does the future hold for Two Passports, One Dream, Adrian and Dylan? Adrian and Dylan. Um, <laughs> thank you. Sorry. Um, I think <laughs> I think there's it's there's so much uncertainty, so it's hard to say. Obviously, there's like a dream scenario, and then there's a realistic scenario. What the future may hold. Yeah. Hopefully, just keep creating exciting content, keep traveling and exploring things for ourselves, but also on our channel, and keep growing and learning. Obviously, there's a lot of countries we'd like to go to, and there's a lot of things that we still want to explore in this world. Um, but borders aren't really open right now. So. Yeah. So I think realistically, probably stay in Thailand for a bit longer and enjoy our time here and keep exploring this country and keep creating riveting content um, yeah. from corners of Thailand. Do you think by the end of the year, by the end of 2022, you're going to be somewhere else? Or do you think you'll still be based there if you had to make a guess? Um, I would make a guess to say that we probably wouldn't still be here we because visa wise mm. i don't know if that would be a possibility depending on obviously what's going on but we also in the world. have plans this summer there's yeah. a few weddings we have to visit yeah so we so have to come back to we're going back to, to europe yeah. anyway mm -hmm. cool. so so there'll be a maybe little... things would change then maybe we would look, do some videos of some crazy accommodations or stuff yeah in, yeah. in the uk or sweden or you know I was going to say, would yeah. you, yeah, film enough of a backlog in Thailand to, to have that off? Or would you film in the UK? I suppose you'd film in the UK. We then. would probably want to film in other places. Because if you look, if you know what you're looking for, you can find exciting things mm. pretty much anywhere. 
Yeah. Um, and there's always going to be a crowd that wants to watch that. Obviously, the big question is then: Would you go from just doing fully Thailand-based content to already like, all of a sudden being in like Sweden? Would that translate to your audience? I think probably not. To probably not. No. So I think. But over time, it would be, it would yeah. Be over time, it might be beneficial for the channel, but short term, it probably would be painful numbers to look at. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, I think people some... wouldn't actually be shown it. Mm. Mm. Possibly, I guess it would depend how the first reaction of your like Thai audience was to to it, because maybe they'd be happy like now that they know you and stuff. Maybe they'd be happy for you to show them like uh, new areas and things like that. Um, yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, look, you give me loads of time. So just to wrap this up, just to kind of finally uh, get this over the finish line, I'm going to ask you guys mm. again, either one message or individually. But if if either or both of you have a message that you want to pass to anybody watching or listening could be about anything it doesn't have to be anything specific um just thank you so much everyone yeah. that watches and comments and um it's really really nice yeah it's it's been it's been really eye opening how kind people are and how much you're not aware of that when you're not exposed to that many people but the more people you see and speak to the the more you realize there's a lot of kindness around mm. and i think that's thank you everyone for giving us that kindness mm. yeah awesome. Well, hopefully you guys go from strength to strength this year. I'll be watching with a lot of this next year. I'll be watching with it. No, yeah. it is out. It is out in January this year. Hopefully you guys go from strength to strength this year. Um, I'll be watching with a lot of interest. And thank you so much for this. I look forward to hopefully doing it again at some point. Thank mm. you for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us. It's been yeah. really nice. And yeah. also to you, I hope your channel keeps growing. And yeah. I hope a lot of our fans come over and watch this. Yeah, exactly. Fingers and crossed. stick around. Yeah, yeah, I hope so too. Thank you. <laughs> Take no care, guys. On our, video, on our page. So. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thanks. Thanks for listening to that episode with Adriana and Dylan and for making it to the end. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please consider subscribing and sharing with a friend. Check out all the links in the description, including to some of the two passports, one dream videos mentioned in this conversation. Be nice. Be happy. Be cool.